And action. Action Jackson. We are back for another Movie Talk podcast. Talking movies with the Cracker Crew. We've been off for a few weeks, but that's all right, because we're back with a bang, baby. And fucking, we got some fucking movies to talk to you about. Hey, <laughs> talking fucking movies. I've watched hella movies since we've last gotten together. That's, I'm glad <laughs> I, you can talk about all of them, because I haven't had time to watch shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, all right, well, I'll try not to take too much okay. time on those. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll just say the one movie that I watched besides these two movies was Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> the original Toy Story? Yeah, the original Toy Story. Fun. I saw it on Disney Plus and I was like, fuck yeah, bud. <laughs> to infinity and beyond, homie. Yep. That's fun. What made you watch that? Fucking, I was tired. I needed something to fall asleep to, and I was like, I'm gonna watch Toy Story. Fuck and yeah. It was like, I was, I had Disney Plus. I for was old like, time's sake. For old time's sake. I grew up on that shit, man. Uh-huh. It's like the first animated, uh, like, CGI Disney movie I ever yeah. watched, and I was like, hell yeah, that's a good that's one. That's like right when Pixar came out or something, yep. right? That's, right, like that's right when they when first they, got big, yeah. Yeah, when Disney collabed with them. Because aside from that, all I've been watching is fucking stand up, honestly. <laughs> like, hey, nothing wrong with that. Let's do us up a snapshot and fucking then we'll get into it. (laughs) Ready, go. Yeah, like well, I said, I let's, let's scroll through the list, I guys. Got a shitload. I'm gonna try not to take too much time on this. Um, the killer. You heard of this one? The new one, David Fincher. It's a Netflix yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember you saying you didn't like it. It sucks, bro. <laughs> Big bag of dicks. It's fucking terrible, bro. Choking on them. Choking on that bag. It. It's just kind of boring with the you know a little bit of action here and there. Gotcha. And the main main character is narrating all the whole time, and and he keeps repeating himself like his rules or whatever. What you know? I don't give a fuck. It's just and, like we. I heard you the first time, <laughs> right. the first forty times you said it's the rules. It is like that. And then don't get me started on the product placement either, bro. Because there's so much blatant fucking uh, product placement, like McDonald's, Starbucks, Amazon, I fucking think, Postmates, and it's just like all yeah, right already. I don't, mm. I don't like that. Um, so when I notice the product placement, yeah, that's a bad sign. Because yeah. some people do it organically. I feel like right, or if it's it's like a Wayne's World situation where yeah. they're like making fun of it, yeah, so it's like they're funny. kind of parodying. Yeah, yeah. But um, I I think the only like it's not a movie, but the only show I think like stuff like that works is like on a show like Dexter where he's like has a double life and he's like he never shows people his true personality so he narrates but what he's narrating is like his inner monologue like right. the shit he would never say yeah. to people yeah. and like and that's fun because then like you get like get the insight on like how this character really feels but if he's just yeah, like narr- not- if he's just like some fucking stranger than fiction just narrating everything he's doing that's kind of whack well it's it's the fact that he just like he's supposed to be the like this meticulous fucking hitman guy and he just keeps he keeps reiterating his fucking code or whatever, and it's just it gets annoying. That's but a also, have you seen that show? You, because I think they do that too pretty well. Like him narrow waiting, narrating, narrow, narrow waiting, narrow waiting. <laughs> Excuse I me, I, I've been drinking a little. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he he's got the beer log. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that show you is pretty good. Uh, on, um, I haven't seen it. Actually, you know Netflix. what? I did think of two more movies I actually watch. I remember. All right, throw one out. Um, it's a so I don't like a lot of the X Men movies, but one that I really like is the one that I just watched. Um, 
which is X-Men Days of Future Past, because it's based on, like, one of the coolest... I used to have, like, a ton of X-Men comics when I was a kid. And so that is, like, based... It's pretty heavily based on, like, one of the best X-Men stories, which is about how a scientist gets a hold of mutant DNA, and then he builds, like, these, these machines that can detect mutants and then they hunt them down but then it the machine kind of it like a terminator-esque thing happens to where like the machine decides that it needs to eliminate like all the future lines of dna so it starts they start killing people Mm -hmm. that will eventually like have mutant kids and so like it it makes the world like this super desolate place and so uh the mutants in the future are trying to send someone back in time to um, warn everybody what's coming and to like try and stop these events from happening, and that's what X Men Days of Future Past is all about. And it's a pretty fucking, it's a pretty damn good movie, even though it's like a cheesy superhero movie. It's like one of the ones that's like done really well because like the story is actually really interesting. You know, you know who else was an X Men? Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Dude, that shit's funny. Sorry. No, that was good. That was a good one. Dude, uh, fuck Caitlyn Jenner. She doomed. I know, she killed a man, She right? fucking ran a dude over, and then she's supposed to be trans, but then she voted against gay marriage. Like, <laughs> it's like, what? get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you ridiculous person. All right, uh, another one I watched was Good Time. Have you heard of this? It's an 824. It's got the, you know, the fucking mm. vampire guy from uh, Twilight. Oh, Robert Pattinson. Robert yeah. Pattinson, yeah, him. And then his brother is like a fucking special needs guy. And they do like a... They try to rob a place or something, and he gets the uh, his brother gets fucking popped. So he's trying to get his brother out of jail. It was fucking it's a pretty good movie, and it uh, it held my it, it held like the tension the whole time. Sure. It was like very like you know fucking honestly. I've uh, I've seen a few. What's mo- gonna happen? I've seen a few movies. Robert Patterson been has been. He's in. good. He's actually a really good fucking actor. He's really he just good. Kinda, uh, the Lighthouse. I was gonna say I actually really like The Lighthouse. Me that's too. Fucking, I've seen it twice already. That's a fucking crazy movie. <laughs> yeah, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, <laughs> he's farting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> farting and being creepy. He's got like that super rapey look in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Just waiting, <laughs> waiting to fucking date rape. <laughs> like it's like a man's got needs at the lighthouse. I'm trying to think of what else I've fucking seen him in. I know I've seen him in uh, um, a handful of other things. Well, I mean, um, I have two. I mean, honestly, I, I I thought he was actually a really good Batman too. I actually really liked the Batman movie. Oh uh, yeah, at. he was Batman. Um, you got one more. You said I had one more. Uh, it's another superhero movie, uh, and I it's because I love Spider Man. Gay. So, no, I'm I, hey, I'm gay for Spider Man. Fuck I'm y'all. Just hating. <laughs> hey, just a hater. Uh, but no, I actually I really uh, as a kid like his comic books were my favorite ones, and uh, my favorite iteration of Spider Man is the Miles Morales Spider Man. I think he's just like he's a really fucking well written cartoon cool. one. Yeah, yeah. And so the I watched I played the, the video game. I watched the second one, um, um, Across the Spider Verse. It's really fucking good, man. I think I like it. I know every, people say they love it. I think I like it every time. I uh, like every like some every subsequent watch I've had. I've liked it more. It's it's a fucking good movie, dude. And it's like for being as long as it is, it goes by like pretty fat. Like it's really it's a really well paced movie for its length. Hells yeah. And I, what's interesting and about it, too, is it takes, like, a really cheesy Spider-Man villain, which is the Spot, and makes him, like, terrifying. I've never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the he's, like, he's, um, he was in the 90s uh, Spider-Man cartoon for a, a couple episodes. He's a guy that um, essentially he gets caught in a machine that... Um, allows someone to cross into other dimensions and it causes him the ability to like warp to like different parts in space. But this is the first time like we actually see him using that power to like jump to like other um, universes. Mm. And so he like becomes super powerful by the end of the movie by like continually like being blown up inside like the machine that originally created him. He like keeps jumping to, um, different universes and doing the same experiment again, and it keeps making him stronger and stronger until uh, the point uh, where he can basically just go wherever he wants and like he can move space and time as- essentially in whatever way he wants. So, all right, it's a tight movie. Uh, my next one <laughs> is Tide Butthole. 
uh, Billy Madison. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking of classic. Course, uh, I've seen this movie a million times, but I gotta tell you why I picked it, be- or why I watched it, because Sarah's been buying Trisket crackers <laughs> lately, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, and I, I told her I was like. Maybe if you'd have told me there were delicious tricks get crackers, I could have enjoyed them with you. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know where that was from, dude. Oh, she didn't that's know. tragic. That's tragic. That's, <laughs> that movie's so funny. <laughs> Saying sorry doesn't put the tricks get crackers into my stomach now, does it? <laughs> my, one of my favorite, did you see that guy's balls? <laughs> they were oh, weird. weird. <laughs> So yeah, that's a we watched it together, and, you know, fun and that's what's so funny is that's such a like an insignificant line in that movie. But she was like, "That was that was that was like a line they just you know brushed by, like it's not a fucking." Significant but it's so line. it's so memorable though, right? And I was, and she was like, "How do you remember that?" I was like, "You know, how many times I've seen this fucking movie, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what yeah. else is fun about that movie? All the scenes, everything. Well, yeah, everything, but." The scene um, that where like, all the scenes where they're like partying, like Norm Macdonald and yeah. him and like the other guy yeah, that's the with him, yeah. they're actually really drunk. <laughs> like that's like why it's so convincing. They're actually maybe they're playing Marco Polo. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, I've only seen the, uh, the the lady that plays Veronica Vaughn in a few movies. I, she was Sonya Blade yeah, in the Sonya original. Blade. The original Mortal Kombat, but I don't really, I don't remember, like past like the mid nineteen. Something else, but I don't remember her in a lot of movies like in the past like two thousand. You know what I mean? Oh, she was Veronica Vaughn. Yeah, so hot. Want Dude, to touch the high? She was so <laughs> hot. I was like, I would have never been able to stand up in class if she was my teacher. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Junior. If peeing your pants is cool, then I'm Miles Davis. Consider me Miles Davis. That's the grossest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> You're scared. He's like, they love their sloppy jaws. You're scaring us, lady. lady. You're scaring us. <laughs> yeah, that movie is While endlessly Mortal... quotable. <laughs> While Mortal Cat Combat is a great game, I think Donkey Kong is better. Donkey, Donkey Kong, sucks. Kong sucks. You suck. You know something you suck. He's <laughs> like, you want to trade me that pudding for the rest of this banana? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know how badly I can beat you, right? <laughs> 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 or that scene when they when they're playing dodgeball, he's really throwing the ball. Yeah, he really <laughs> threw it at the kids and made them cry. Yeah, it's so funny. He's really pegging them with the fucking dodgeball. It's so funny. All right, we got to get through these. Um, Arrival, have you seen it? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good fucking. It was movie. eyes decent. You got the what's that guy's name? Jeremy Reiner, and yep. it's got Amy Adams. She's Amy fucking Adams. hot. Too, I love man. her. Yeah, she's good. I love a good redhead. I know you know me. I, I'm not too big into sci-fi, but I like that one fairly, fairly well. Fairly well. It's an interesting take on time. You know what I mean? On like on how like time as a concept works, and how like different like beings with different entities, pers- yeah, yeah. different entities experience time differently. I, I found that to be fascinating. Yeah, uh, that was a decent one. Um, next one. There will be blood because uh, of Keith, course. Keith of course. bought me the Blu-ray for my birthday. Shout out to Keith. And I fucking love it. And I watched it. I watched all the extras. It was Dude, fun. the end of that movie is one of the most memorable endings of all time. I'm <laughs> like, finished. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he beats him with the fucking pool, or not pool, um, bowling pin. Yep. Yeah, you- fuck you have a milkshake. I have a straw. Your milkshake is over there. And my straw reaches all the way into your milkshake. Every day I drink the blood of lamb from Bandy's tract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking love it, dude. He's dog. People who've been listening to the movie podcast know how much I fucking love that movie. Yo, well, it's like I, lo- I just love Daniel Day-Lewis. Even in movies I don't like that much, like... Example, Gangs of New York. Like I don't. There's like things about Gangs of New it's, York. That's kind of a weird one. I mean, it's good, but it's. But I, it's like there's a lot of it I don't like. But it's like every scene he's in, he fucking steals the show. Yeah, Bill the Butcher. Yeah, he's like, 
I love this boy and he betrayed me. Like he's it's, just his line like all his lines are so just so fucking memorable, is there, man. Is there any other Daniel Day Lewis's you've seen? The fucking Abraham Lincoln movie oh, he's yeah, awesome yeah, in. Yeah. I've seen The Last of Mohicans. That one's uh, like yeah. it's okay. It's not like I didn't I don't know if some, I finished that one. I started I can't remember it. if I did either. It's not on par with some of his other. Have work, you seen though. My Left Foot? I haven't. That, that one, one's that's pretty one, good. That, that that's one really I haven't good. seen. Phantom Thread is pretty good. I like that one a lot. That's another Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh shit! We got to get through these. Um, Saltburn. I went to the theaters and saw Saltburn. Have you heard of this one? Mm, Barry think... Keoghan. I thought it was really good. It's very strange. It's not for everybody. Uh, I think I've heard of it, but I don't remember the premise of the movie. I really like Barry Keoghan. He's fucking. He's kind of a newer actor, and he's really good. He was in uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer. He was in. Uh, oh okay. Okay. Uh, the Banshees of Inisherin, which was really good. I love that one. Oh, is that the one that's got uh, Colin, Colin Farrell? Farrell and, and, okay, yeah. I still need to watch that movie. Oh, it's on my list. I should pick it. <laughs> I want to honestly. Um, not I'm not gonna pick it this time, but I I, I want to pick In Bruges. It's a fucking really yeah, good I movie. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, but I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna maybe pick... we should do double. Fucking, you pick that one. I'll pick fucking it, Banshees of Inisherin. You want to do that? That would be cool. After we'll just, after Christmas. Yeah, after Christmas. Yeah, maybe. That's a, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. All right. Next one was the Terminal. Tom Hanks. I love that one. Yeah, uh, it's Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, she's so hot. She dips beneath the lasers. She Ooh. definitely married her husband for money. Like there's like <laughs> oh there's, uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, there's just there's no. It's like there's no way you can convince me otherwise. She's fucking fine, bro. She's, I know. Well, and she married him when she was like in her early twenties, and he was like almost fifty. And I was just like, you did it for the money. Like you are not convincing me anybody otherwise. Like he's like, like I think he was like forty seven, <laughs> and she was like maybe like twenty five or twenty six yeah. when they got married. I was like. Come on, you, you did it for the money. I mean, I know you're an actress and you have your own money, but fucking Michael Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas is like a close, like you know, one of the highest paid actors of like all time. I was like, you did it. She you did it for the fucking trapped money. me and Sean Connery. You know what? One of the best movies Whoa. she's in. What's uh, that? Fucking um. The Mask of Zorro. That's a fucking great oh, yeah. movie, dude. Yeah, Antonio Banderas yeah, and, and uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. That's a fucking good movie, dude. It's been a minute since I've seen it. How do you feel a... about the Terminal, though? You like it? You don't I like do it? like it, man. It's I do. Good, right? I mean, I you know, I'm. It's got Stanley Two Cheeks in it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I do. I do like. I like a lot of Tom Hanks movies. I know, man. dude. Like, He's fucking. How can you not? Honestly, the only one. Um, I liked But he drinks kid. baby's blood. No, I'm kidding. Probably. <laughs> that uh, adrenochrome. Uh, the only movie of his that I liked as a kid that I don't like now is Big. It's just like, you know what I mean? Big's a good movie. I think it's an okay movie. I just, I just, it's, I don't feel the same about it. I like, there's some other movies that Dude, I like Dude, I got more. a Zoltar right here. Look. Nice. From Big, you know, when but, he, uh, yep. the Fortune Machine. Yeah, the Fortune, Fortune Machine. Uh, yeah. There's other movies I like him better in, though, like um, Cast Money Away. Pit. I love Money Pit, dude. Money Pit's hilarious. I haven't seen that one, but... Oh, dude. Castaway was good. Oh, Castaway's good. What's the one where he fucking... The Somali pirates fucking... Oh, Have yeah, Captain that? Phillip. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was good. I mean, Forrest Gump. Fucking, Forrest he's, got, Gump. He, he's got a lot of bangers, dude. Yeah, got a go. lot of bangers. Toy Story. Toy Story, <laughs> which I watched. Um, Joe and the Volcano. Like, he's got some fucking... He's got some good movies on oh, his Oh, and belt. that uh, Christmas movie. Oh, um, Polar Express. Polar Express. I never got into that movie. Same, man. It was more for, it's more for the kids. He does like more... 12 different voices on them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a few more. <laughs> Minari, have you heard of this? Nope. This is uh, Steven Yun, the guy from Walking Dead, the Korean guy. Oh, okay. I do like him. He's a good actor. Yeah, it's about him and his Korean family moving to like a rural, like a fucking farm, basically. They're going to start farming Korean fruits and vegetables, but it's like it's rough and it's hard to do. And that's it's like a, you know... Uh, family drama type shit. Sure, sure. Pretty good, pretty good. Next one, uh, we all, we, me and CJ and my, we all got together and watched There's Something About Mary again. Oh, uh, that's a classic, Fucking man. love it. Me and CJ were just quoting it earlier. Seven minute abs. No, 
I said seven minute abs. <laughs> he said, well, the Harlan Williams part. He's like, you heard of this thing, eight minute abs? I got a better plan, seven minute abs. <laughs> He's like, that's good until someone comes out with six minute abs. He's like, he like tweaks out for a second. <laughs> no, seven minute abs. You can't work out in six minutes. <laughs> that's one of the best parts. Anyways, moving right on. A good person. Oh, yeah. That was a weird one. It had... Uh, what's her face? <laughs> Have you seen Midsummer? What's her name? Yeah, I don't remember uh, her name. Florence Pugh. It had her, some other people, Amazon Prime. I had mixed feelings about it. it is, it's like a hard drama. Oh, yeah. She was kind of... Oh, she was engaged... To this guy, and then she ended up having an accident, and the guy's brother and wife were in the car, and they died, and she didn't. So it's was, it's was pretty heavy. <laughs> oh, and it had uh, Morgan Freeman in it. He was really good. Dude, he's always good. Last one I watched the other day, just yesterday, I think it was Spun. I love Spun. Oh, the drug movie, yeah. It's fucking insane and fucking Yo, crazy and wild, it's but one I of, still it's love one of it. The really good I've ones. seen it like a good amount of times, and it's still. I think it do still you, holds up. Do you like Transpotting then? Like, I've seen it one time. It's. A, I don't think I loved it. I didn't hate it, but. So that's the, I think that's my favorite, personal favorite drug movie. I love see, Transpotting. Yeah. yeah, there are those movies like. Uh, Fear and Loathing is one of them. Yep. And, uh, what's what's the fucking Jared Leto? Oh, that see that one. It's like what, Requiem, Requiem for a Dream. For a dream yeah. It's 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 a good movie. It's just so fucking hard I feel to like watch. I've man. only seen it once too. I've been crazy enough to watch it. I think three or four times, and it's it's worse every time you watch it. Because it's just like even though you know it's coming, it's just like it's still it's still that same emotional pain. You're just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it's and what's crazy is that movie is less about. I mean, it is about. It's very much about drug addiction and like the harsh reality of living in that world. But it's more so. I think it's kind of doubled with the the falsities of the American dream and like the yeah. real danger of chasing that and not like being grounded like the, you know, like with the mom be getting on the game show and she's just popping the, f these weight loss pills that are essentially speed. Yeah, and it's like them trying to like hustle yeah. and fucking make as much money as they can, you know, so they can, you know, have that, that American summer. It's sure. very much like, you know, an antithesis of like, hey, maybe the American dream isn't what it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I don't remember that one too well. I've seen it enough times. But like, yeah, but I, you, I, know, yeah. you know, fucking Brittany Murphy and Spun. <laughs> I freaking love her. I know she's fucking all fucking tweaked out and all, but I've always I loved to, Brittany Murphy. Man. I need to go back and watch that. It's been on that one's. It also been, has Jason Swartman and fucking. It's got a. Um, it's got a um, John Leguizamo too, right? Yeah, and and the other guy from fucking Wrist Cutters. Oh, um, I can forget his fucking name. Is it fuck the, it something fuck it? <laughs> is it the the main guy? The main or? guy, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's in there. That's right. And also the wrestler. What's his name? Ah, shit. You know the movie The Wrestler. What's that fool's name? Oh, are you talking about uh, Mickey Rourke? Mickey Rourke, yeah, he's in there. Oh, shit, okay. All right, we should get into a movie, though. We're already 22 minutes in. Yeah, I, I know you want to talk some shit on this movie, so... Which one do you want to go? Uh, we'll go with 13 Assassins first, man. I'll let you I'll let you say your piece about it, and then I'll kind of get into why I picked it. 13 Assassins is a 2010 action war movie director... Takeshi Mi... How do you say that? Do you know? Mike? I would have to look Mike? at it. Let me see. It's M-I-I-K-E. Uh, let's see. You see it? Uh, yeah, it would be uh, Takashi Mike. Yeah. Mike. Mike. Um, Takashi Mike. Uh, it's got a fucking 95 Rotten Tomato score. Pretty damn good. 88 audience. Tagline. Take up your sword. That's Simp a that's simple actually, and fucking to the point. Yeah, I, I would say that's no pretty, pun intended. That's pretty apt. Um, 
But I'll, I'll, let, I'll let me. Uh, you, I'll let let me give me your thoughts on this movie. <laughs> I know you didn't like it. I kind of I kind of <clears> got <throat> that impression by what you said. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there's things I like about it, and there's um, things I didn't like about it. But um, what I like, I told you uh, uh, previously, it did feel like a fucking. It felt like you gave me an assignment <laughs> for this movie because, well, I mean, I I knew it was subtitled and shit, but I feel like the dialogue is very fast too, so I gotta yeah. be like on my fucking game to watch this movie and fucking yeah. try to get and, everything that's in there. And to be fair too, like for me, I'm like used to reading subtitles, so like I read them really fast, so like I don't usually, I don't really have that problem. Like right. so, I, like to me, like. That wouldn't even occur to me, you know what no, I mean? If I were to review it, you know, I would know pretty much what's going on, and I would, it would probably be easier to second watch. And right. Shoot. How many times have you, you watched this I've movie? I've seen this movie probably about six or seven times. All right. Because me, well, I, I, um, that's so this pretty, is a, that's pretty high in your list then. Yeah. Like, it's so gotta this, be. this is a shout out to, again, my friend from Chicago, Nick Bowen. Shout my out, fucking, Nick. Fucking homie for life. What up, Nick? Uh, he was the first person to show this to me because, like, we kind of have similar movie tastes, like, for, like, um, like samurai movies and, like, kung fu movies and shit. And so this is one of those samurai movies he showed me. I was like, damn, that was a badass movie. Like, <laughs> Well, it's got really brutal and shocking imagery, you know, and it's, at, like, the woman whose limbs are cut off and shit and yeah. all that. Well, and it's, like, and, that was, was, like, and it very much, um, not to cut you off, but in, ahead. um, like during this time period, um, so, um, uh, in, in China they had emperors, in Japan they had shogunate, right? And so shogunate is kind of like an emperor. The difference being is like an emperor is someone that, um, you know, like those cultures viewed as someone that was imbued with the power to rule because their bloodline is from the gods. Whereas the shogunate were military rulers, so they won over the entire land in the country by military law and rule, and so they're much more brutal. And so the whole issue in this movie is that the leader of the entire country, who is like a brutal military leader, has appointed his psychotic little brother to be like his advisor and so because he's the brother of the shogunate nobody can fucking touch him but even though he's doing all this horrible shit and that was actually something in this time especially um if you go back in like japanese history there were like people in the shogunate that were fucking awful and they did terrible things to the people because Nobody could do anything about it. And so, like, shit got so bad, there was revolution. And so that happened a lot in Japanese history throughout, like, what they call the feudal period and then the, the shogunate period. So there was, like, um, and after, like, the Tekagawa period, which is, like, the last shogunate, which is kind of, like, where this movie takes place, where samurais are becoming less important because... Um, Japan is slowly starting to imp- implement rifles. So, like, once you have rifles, swords really don't, aren't good for shit, right? Mm. So, like, this is kind of, like, where the samurais are dying off. But they're still, you know, you're still in this, like, last era of you have all these guys that were trained to be warriors and they're used to killing each other and now they have nothing to do. But then you have this spoiled fucking, essentially, bureaucrat uh. who doesn't, you know, he doesn't know anything about real violence but he's just sadistic because he you know he's coddled so he can do whatever the fuck he wants and he's done atrocious things and he's about to have um the most power the second most power in the entire country and that's when the other you know head families decide we gotta fucking get rid of this guy it's gonna be a problem yeah they gotta like assemble the team it's one of those yep. movies you gotta assemble the team but um, in Japanese culture, you know, if you're a samurai, that means you're a part of the government. That means you listen to your lord. And so, it, you know, it's a, it's a great sin to kill someone that is, you know, essentially a part of your, that cl- your clan. And so that's why you see, like, a lot of what they call hierarchy in this movie is because... Um, where they kill... Where, they where it's, it's, themselves. It's, it's to keep themselves from what they call disgrace like you know honor is very important to japanese people especially in this time period and so like there's a lot of 
I'm like, I love the shit. So like, um, I know that was one of my notes, bro. I was like, you're definitely more into this sort of culture than I am. And that's probably why you love this. Not that I am not fuck. Not that I'm against it or whatever, but I, yeah. do, I think, I do think it's interesting. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's like, but and you're, I, I'm just so fascinated kind of thing, by like, Yeah. And especially like with samurais, they're so fascinating because they're all about honor. And so it's like, you know, they would rather die on their sword than, be dishonored or and you know disgrace their family their country their lord and so um that's like and that's kind of the big thing where um with that main samurai who is following the akashi lord where he like he knows that his lord is evil and a piece of shit and he's doing terrible things and he can't stop them. But that's also his lord. So he his job is to protect him and serve them and so by you know he can't let him be killed because that would be a dishonorable thing even though he's a terrible person that's like that's part of that culture and it's like what i find so fascinating is like you have these 13 guys that know they're gonna die and they know if they don't die they're gonna have to commit harakiri because what they're doing is essentially like a grave sin and it's dishonorable because they're killing essentially somebody that's part of like the main family but it's still something that has to be done Ooh, I just I don't know if I caught all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, during the movie. Well, and it's hard. It's, and it's, a, it's and interesting and it, that you yeah, explaining and, it now. Yeah, and it's well, it's a, it's if you don't um, if you've never read like jap like about Japanese culture or like studied like the sam like the samurai or that like period of time in Japan. Mm-hmm. That's like it's stuff that can be very confusing. It's like why it's like why the fuck they just letting this guy. Do whatever they want. It's like, why isn't he being brought to justice? It's like, well, he's the basically the emperor's brother. Like, you, nobody's going to punish him, so he can do whatever the fuck they want. Mm. Which is why they have to go about doing this, and it's also why they have to kill him before he makes it back to like his land. Because if he makes it back to what it's called the Akashi land, which is mm-hmm. like his clan, they're never going to be able to beat them. Because like thirteen guys aren't going to be able to beat you know like two thousand soldiers. It's just it's right, impossible. Right, right. But thirteen guys, if they're smart, can beat fifty soldiers. Very, can beat very 80, strategic yeah. and yeah. fucking and you know they really pick their battles. Yep. Uh, one of my notes was the and they didn't use much, but the little CGI that they did use doesn't really hold up. No, it's very dead. And you're talking about the um, I know exactly the bulls or whatever that they let up. Well, it's the bulls and also the the woman, the limbless woman. She looks really good when she's like got the robe on, but as soon as she like falls over and it's animated, yeah. I, I actually had the same note. I was like, that looked really dated as far as CGI goes. I was like, it honestly would have been better if they would have just um. They- blue screened her limbs and uh, just let her kind of like move around yeah. they, they shouldn't have tried to cgi that, that was i i actually agree with you on that i was something it that was, was really stuck out to me this watch too when they blew up the bridge or whatever do you know what i'm talking about yeah exactly i'm what not exactly about. sure what i wrote because i don't remember exactly but i i wrote the cgi doesn't up hold up that when they blew up the bridge the flaming bulls oh yeah that's right yeah well and this is also a japanese movie so they don't have like the same budget that like a hollywood movie was had it was actually kind of surprising this movie for a minute got pretty popular what year was uh, 2010 2010. it was probably better back in 2010 i mean it not as the the cgi well people were more lenient lenient on the cgi well actually that was actually i think even the first time I watched it, I, that was something I think I noticed. I was just like, huh. Like, I kind of ignored the bulls thing, but it was the, the woman. Well, like, once she, like, started, like, kind of rolling around. Yeah. It was, like, really, um, it's kind of really evident, like, that it was CGI. And it was like, this is kind of bad. It's like, I'm just kind of kind of forgive this. But there's this. not a whole lot in it. So no, they, they kind of, they, they peppered it in, but it still stands out. Yeah. it's And it's one of those unfortunate things, because, like, the movie itself is, like, I think if you can, <laughs> if you know the history and like can pick, can keep up with the dialogue, it uh, it it makes a lot of sense, like why the way things are and why they have to go about doing this the way they do it. Because yeah. pretty much all of them know that 
again, like I said, even if this mission succeeds, the people that are left living are pretty much honor bound to die because they all have government ties. So, like, if they, you know, kill this high government official, they're going, there's going to be repercussions to them. So, they're going to have to commit hierarchy to protect their families because that's kind of how that works is like, you know, if you do something dishonorable, you can commit higher curie and it'll like save face from like your lord and the government. And it also kind of like keeps your family your safe. Yeah. You, uh, it kind of resolves your sins essentially. Um, which is like that. That also, you guys are super badass. That takes balls. How, yeah. To die how that the way. fuck can so, you do that? Bro? Yeah. That and, is and that's, insane. And then the crazier thing is, is like they f- really did that shit too. Yeah. Like, and that was considered an honorable death to eviscerate your guts and then be decapitated. Yeah, like it's, they like stab it into yeah. their stomach and then pull it across yeah. their that's, stomach. That's and real. Like, that's real shit, dude. Like, yeah, that's fucking. Yeah, there's a lot of brutal fucking scenes in this well and that was that was like feudal japan dude it was fucking brutal like um another little qualm i had with this movie was uh <clears throat> so they're trying to like uh ambush this guy in that little village right yeah same village that the bulls were in or whatever but i was like how the fuck did they put together those giant gates that just close up and then like how did they put all that together? And it would have took so much time. Right? Yeah, it's a little. It like there are things like about it that are a like it didn't little, seem reasonable. Yeah, because it, it was just like man, you would have had to cut down. They so had all many these trees. yeah different traps that are fucking ready and to I go. Think, whenever I think the like the idea came. behind it is like they ha- had the the village they had all the villagers like help them build that stuff before they evacuated but even then it's just like you know it that it would be really hard much time did they yeah i was like they would it would have been really hard to do that in like 40 i think it would have been between like 24 to 72 hours but like three days would be a i i give you that one too that was (laughs) something i kind of i was just like (laughs) man all this all this construction stuff is um um kind of it's a little weird that they got all this done in such a short amount of time but i think the first time i watched it i i didn't notice it because i it, there was like such a build up and there's so much tension up to this moment of them like these 13 guys fighting like 200 dudes so i kind of like suspended my disbelief to be like okay like how are they going to go about fighting this many people right. but honestly dude like once they get to the actual battle like the battle scenes are like really well shot. Yeah. I was just like, they're they're pretty, no, I, they're I pretty crazy. That. They're pretty fucking crazy, man. I like the um, the guy who they cut out of the tree, the comic relief guy. Yeah. He was cool. I really liked him. And what's funny is, um, I uh, so he's a lot not of... an actual samurai, right? But nope. he's he's there fighting with them. Yep, because he. Uh, well, what's interesting about him is he is not only like a parody character, but he kind of serves. He's what they call in Japanese culture an oni, which would be like a demon or like forest spirit. Which is, if you notice, at like there's a point in the movie where there is a throw a sword that gets thrown at him and it goes through his neck, but then somehow he survives yeah. at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of like one of the theories because all the stuff he's talking about is like, it's like uh, Japanese lore. It's like this demon that fell in love with a, a princess and then he was assassinated and like became a demon. And so there's a lot of theories about that guy, but I, the one I kind of agree right. the most with is he's probably he's some very t- likable. <laughs> yeah, he's very like he's really funny. He's like I hate samurai. Yeah, he's he's kind like, of talking. You're shit. so angry. Yeah. You're also arrogant. He's, yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, what's interesting about him is he's also a parallel to um, the Akashi Lord, who is like you know what's worse, a demon. Or a corrupt government official with almost unlimited power. So he's just like he's essentially like the lesser of good, two evils. Um, yeah, juxtaposition. Yeah. And then after all that, like towards the end of that battle, or whatever, they're just like standing in front of each other, and they just stab each other, <laughs> which was well, what I, fe- hap- I felt well, that was kind of what weird. happens is is he's essentially what he's showing him. He's like, I, uh, um, because. He's never had any real... He's never had to be afraid of anything. And he's never had to really fight. And so what he's essentially saying is you're a coward with... Uh, what he says verbatim is you're a coward who just has a decorative sword. He's like, and you're a decorative 
government official, he's like, you mean nothing. Like, he's essentially, he is essentially swearing at this guy in Japanese. Like, because, like, there's... Are you there's cussing not, at me? Yeah, exactly. It's a, <laughs> that situation. You cussing at me? But he, essentially, he's he's looking down on this guy who's supposed to be well above his level. Sure, yeah. And the thing is, is he knows that he's going to... Like, if he lives, he's going to have to suffer the consequences of what he does because he's killing the shogunate's brother he's killing the most powerful person in the country's brother which is part of the reason why he lets him stab him because one he's showing him this is how a true samurai acts and two then he stabs him in the stomach he's like this is what pain feels like it's something you've probably never felt before and that's when he starts crying like a little bitch he's like yeah that's kind of what I thought. He's like, you, you're, you're just basically an ornament. You're not, you're yeah, not see, a real. I guess I didn't get all the back fucking. The uh... it's hard, and it's hard to keep up with it because you're right. That if you're like not used to reading um, subtitles, like I mean, especially like in older like dubbed like uh in older like subbed movies, the dialogue is much. I think I'm a much... slow reader. <laughs> I, well, for like it's like I said, man. I've watched so many. Movies like that because I love like and they're mostly Asian based. <laughs> yeah, and and, they, and especially with especially with Japanese movies. That's what I was saying. You're more Japanese. You're more into the culture than I am. Yeah, and with Japanese subs, they come fast, dude. So like you like I've just gotten re- used to reading real fast. So like well, I pick up on. That's pick, good. That's oh good. shit! Yeah, that, a, was, that was weird. <laughs> we got a little weird. A little then. hiccup. But but yeah, man, it um. It very much was to show him how weak he is and, like, that he's not a warrior. That's, like, kind of what that whole scene is about. Right, it's like you're, right. He's like, you're not a warrior. You're kind of just a little bitch who was given way too much power. He's like, you're a little fucking kid. Let me show you what a man is like. And that that's, like, that's what it's about. And then he's just like, okay, now it's time for you to die and just cuts his head off. Now but, you're um, all in big, big trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but really bef- right, my favorite moment in the movie, though, is when he, like, he, so I don't know if you caught this, but the two guys that fight at the end, that the, the guy that is like, this is my lord, I can't let you kill him, that guy, and the guy that opposes him, uh, Shimazan, I think is his name, they went to the same samurai school. Like, so they're, like, they were, like, at one point, like, friends. And, like, they were, like, deep, they're deeply tied to each other. And the guy that is protecting the Lord is, like, you know, you could never beat me. He's, like, well, I could never beat you in a dojo, but this isn't a dojo. And so that's the thing is, like, on a (laughs) battlefield, sometimes you got to fight dirty if you want to (laughs) win. And that's exactly what he does. He literally kicks mud into his eyes and then chops his head off and i love that <laughs> it's like a very like important lesson to learn on a battlefield and people that you know are used to sparring but not actual fighting it's like it's a t- it's a completely different beast when you you have things in the environment that can help you win like so yeah. fuck yeah yeah but my my favorite one of my favorite scenes is when the that one uh, samurai leads them to the field that has all the swords in them, and he's just constantly picking up swords and killing people. I just think cinematically, it's such an interesting scene to watch. I forget. <laughs> there's, Sorry. There, no, it's, it's cool. Been a, it's been a week. Uh, but there, ish, there's over a, a week there is a scene where um, there's this like. Um, portion in the village that has like a hundred store swords sticking in the ground he's literally just grabbing a sword and then when it breaks he just picks up another one and kills the next guy it's a it's a (laughs) pretty cool cool scene but it also i feel like you know they kill a lot of people but they also do make this point where it's like you know because that's where the history of, of this is important like this kind of takes place in the tokugawa period where the kind of samurais started to become not important and so, like, a lot of the samurais, that it, like, they're not battle-tested. So, they're just dudes that have, like, learned sword techniques in dojos, right? Mm-hmm. And so, the the guys that they're, the 13 assassins, a lot of them are guys that have, like, fought in wars. And so, they're, they're battle-tested. They know how to kill people. And that's kind of how they sell that to where it's like, yeah, you know, they're fighting 100 dudes. But they're fighting 100 dudes that haven't really fought in wars before. So, that's why they're kind of getting murdered. That's why they're like they're like able to kill so many of them because like they kind of suck at fighting, <laughs> and that was kind of the point 
too early in the movie. He's like, you know, we, we may only have 12 guys, but all 12 of our guys have fucking killed people before. Like, they know how to fight. And he's like, there are a f- very few samurais these days that actually are good samurais. And so... Have you seen um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? I don't like that movie, man. It's fucking Mike picked it before on, it's, the, on the podcast. It's it's essentially I, like I thought it was all right. I love Michelle Yeoh. I fucking oh love yeah, her. dude. She's she's the best part of that movie. She's amazing in that movie. <laughs> yeah, she's However, great. that movie is like Kung Fu meets The Matrix. It's kind of it's kind of tacky. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Bit, yeah. It's like I, I well, that I, I'm, that I don't guy want, was part of the Matrix, right? He was the director. Or something? I think he might have been the fight choreographer right, or something. I'm pretty sure that was the same fight choreographer. But yeah, no, I literally fell asleep when I watched that movie the first time. Like, <laughs> thought it was pretty boring, honestly. And I mean, I love, you know, I love all kinds of different foreign movies, but that just wasn't the one, man. I was just like, hey. I, 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 just, I couldn't get on the hype train on that one. I'm kind of sure. with you. I was like, you know, I, I, I love a good fucking samurai movie. I love a good, like, kung fu movie, but yeah, not this one, man. <laughs> Anyway, anything else you got to say about this no, one? No, I'm just, I just, you know, I just want to nerd out and talk about all the shit that I know about yeah, Japanese. That was fun. I learned a little, I learned a little something off that, you know, and put some things into perspective. But as far as a rating, where do you sit? I don't rate this movie honestly as high as I did when I first watched it because I was like, damn, this movie fucking rules. And now there's like stuff that I've noticed. I was like. Yeah, this is a little weird. I was like, you know, I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know why. I, I think the reason I didn't pick up on this before is because I was so entrenched in the tension, and I it was like, there's such like this nice build up yeah. to that like fucking fifty minutes of just you just craziness in the moment. You just but now that I've like objectively had enough time to like kind of break process things down it. a little more yeah, and yeah, process yeah. it, I was like, yeah, there's some stuff that's weird. I was like, you know, they. I mean, because I have like read shit. And kind of like looked about the thirteenth assassin guy where they find him in the woods hanging upside down. And it's kind of like that there's a theory that he's a demon. Like there's shit that I kind of piece yeah, together that make it makes it makes him make a little more sense. But at the same time though, they really don't try to explain him. And like so He was my with, favorite guy. <laughs> without He's like the comic relief. Yeah, without like without really like thinking about like those pieces that are very much a part of like Japanese stories and culture like him surviving is like that's all it's kind of fucking weird they really don't explain that at all <laughs> I didn't um, mind that I was, but I, but I was I, happy I that he's yeah I, I was happy <laughs> he did too but because I you know I, I, I wasn't really breaking it apart sure. but I'm, I'm just saying I was like it's a little fucking weird like you know what I mean it's <laughs> yeah, a little right, weird right. that he survived a sword through his neck <laughs> yeah like, I know it did look like he was done for uh, but um at the same time, it, yeah, just you know, um, there's st- I still I still really enjoy this movie. I think I think mm-hmm. it's especially as far as like modern day samurai movies go. I think it's one of the better ones. So where are you sitting? Um, <laughs> I, I sit. I think I'm sitting about a seven. Like okay. I, I, I give it a solid seven. I'm not, you know I wouldn't I really wouldn't go higher than that at this point because there are there is stuff that I notice it was just like yeah it's just not perfect the villain though the villain is good he he like they really paint him as a scumbag like they do a good job and that's why i said it at seven i was like you know despite all its faults it was like it's for the most part not age got poorly some good shit in there yeah um i'm gonna put it middle of the road maybe five or so man yeah, i kind of figured which is not bad you know i you might have thought i'd have Giving it a harsher score. Maybe. Actually, I don't know. Actually, that's a better score than I thought you yeah. were going to give it. Honestly, yeah. But yeah, they, like I said, there's things I like, things I didn't like, and I, and if I did watch it again, I already know basically the story, so I would probably be able to take it in more. Like, yeah, like any movie, basically. And now that you like know a little bit about like the, the historical and like cultural significance mm-hmm. of some stuff, that probably didn't make sense to you. But yeah, all right. Um, I gotta take a whiz. <laughs> All right, man. Do a quick break. Whiz out. Break out. Whiz we'll, out. Break out. We'll get into the room, not the Tommy Wiseau one. <laughs> and we're back. What did you think of on the wizard? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was fucking just. <laughs> I was trying to cool off the fucking. 
the GoPro because it was it over the here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I should have did that. <laughs> I tried. I peed on it. And that, <laughs> that didn't work. I, my warm pee didn't yeah. make it cool down. <laughs> I forgot pee was warm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're back to talk about the, not the room room. Not that Tommy just, Wiseau shit. Just room. And not the disaster artist. Like. I still want to watch that movie, though. It's good, man. You no, should. No, I've seen the disaster Oh, you just I, talking about room? Yeah, yeah room. The, the room. R- the room. <laughs> oh, You're hi, Mark. You're tearing me apart. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> I got to see that movie. You haven't seen it, have you? No, I haven't. I've only seen the disaster it's artist. It's not really available. And you, you, like, got to buy it. Off yeah, of Amazon and or I kind of kind of don't want to do that. Yeah, That's me the neither. Problem. Me neither. I was like, I don't really want to fucking own this movie. Can I just, I just watch fucking it. screen stream it, bro? Come right, on. Right, right, right. But yeah, um, the uh, room is a 2015 thriller mystery. Director Lenny Abrahamson. <laughs> Abrahamson. All right. Uh, never heard of him. 93 tomato meter, 93 audience. Wow, wow. they agree. <laughs> it won an Academy Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role, Glo- Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama. A couple of taglines Love Knows No Boundaries. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ew, that's a little on the nose. Oh. And the other it's one. It's like, I think that's sending the wrong message, guys. <laughs> like. Uh, the other one is survive is the only survive is the only beginning. That's a that's sound. What if it was like survival is the only beginning? Then like that would maybe that would it, make, what maybe I miss fucking. No, you, you probably didn't. They just probably fucking. Some people don't know. Grammar is hard for a lot of people. I'll say that. <laughs> but man, like American schools are very bad. <laughs> like so. Anyways, you had no idea about this movie, right? I, I read you, nothing about nothing it. Nothing about it. I'm be honest. It's, it's a crazy a, situation. It is a crazy situation, but I kind of figured it out within the first 20 minutes of the movie. Like, yeah, it's. I think it's kind of apparent. It's like, okay, yeah. Um, she's in a shed. I've kind of figured that much out. Um, why is she in a shed? It's like I don't know. This old Nick guy. Is, he's a little fucking weird. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I think I figured it out. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, just to spoil it for everyone, um, I recommend you go watch it, but if you're not, it doesn't Spoiler matter. Spoiler warning. It's, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So, uh, she was kidnapped a while back. I think it was seven years prior or something like that. And she was put in this shed, locked up. She can't get out. And this guy who fucking he shows up every, once in a while to fuck her and give her... The things she needs, food and all that. And he, you know, ends up impregnating her. And the movie starts when the kid is like five years old. No, it's it's about to be his fifth birthday. Right. But he's upset because they don't have candles. and But there's nothing she can right. do about Right, she bakes that. a cake and everything. But it's not a real cake because it doesn't have candles. He's upset, the boy. No. And it's like one of those things where... At first, you just think she's really, really poor. Like that's kind of like the first, you know what I mean? That's the that's the first your, layer peel. Just like your ah. first thought. Yeah, it's just like oh, she's just really poor, and she's like living in this really like rundown situation. But then the after the first old Nick visit, you're like, huh, that's a little weird, but okay. I was like, okay, is she like maybe she's fucking this guy for money? Like that's you know that's the second <laughs> thought. I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, okay. You know, it's like I don't. Ju- I'm not judging. Like I understand. Like when you fall on hard times, you fall on hard times. But then you see the fucking coded lock on the door, mm-hmm. and then you're like, "Oh, so that's what's going on." She's definitely fucking locked in this. In, she's literally. In she is definitely locked in this room, and old Nick has put her there. And um, I was like, "Yeah, so he's." He's probably kidnapped her. Mm-hmm. Um, I've probably the and that was kind of the th- also the thought I had. I was like, probably the only reason he hasn't killed her yet is because there's a kid, and it's soundproof. By the way, that whole room is soundproof. So she, they try yelling. You know, yep. there's that scene where they're trying to yell to the outside and to no avail. Yep. 
But uh, the, another thing about it is that kid has never seen the outside world. He's been in yep. the room this whole time, and he doesn't he doesn't know the outside world exists. They have TV, and he thinks that's all make believe. It's like a yep. He's a it's it's definitely like warped him in a way that is very unhealthy. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like his um he doesn't really have a semblance of reality. I think that's the most interesting part of the movie where it's just like he he doesn't he doesn't really understand reality because he has no he has no base no for it. Yeah, yeah, he's no. got no concept for it because he's all he's ever experienced is being in this tiny little room. Yeah, and what's on TV. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. The yeah, old Nick comes in regular, occasionally the banger, and and then you know they had they try to hatch a plan to escape, and she has to fucking like convince her son that the outside world is real because he don't believe her. You know, yeah, I mean? it's a very because all this time she's been like keeping this from her, to try to shelter him to. Um, so he doesn't understand the harsh reality of their situation. That, that he was born into. And he's essentially a rape baby. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, that's a fucked up thought to put in a kid's head. So it's like, she's, you know, she's done what she can as a mom. But that's the, there's, that's kind of the other thing that is kind of surprising. I was like, it's kind of surprising that she survived childbirth in this tiny little room. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I mean, that seems a little rough because he, he wouldn't even fucking go to the, well, but he wouldn't even go to the fucking grocery store to get the kid, like, fucking, you know, fever medicine. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it's kind of, like, yeah. not really believable that he really, like, gave her anything that she would need, like, going through childbirth to, like, not only protect the kid, but also to, like, keep her from having complications with... Birth, that comes with yeah, birthing yeah. a child. It's just like there's there's some things where it's just like I'm kind of nitpicking it right now. It's just like it's a kind of unbelievable one that he just didn't murder her at some point, and two that she lived through the childbirth in that tiny little shed. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a caveman keep... did it all the time. True, true. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, yeah. So that's that's basically the whole first half of the movie is them. It's yeah. showing their whole situation and how they're going through life and how ju- how just they're coping with this terrible and, fucking situation. And honestly, in spite of like my, um, you know, dejections with conjecture with some of the stuff. Yeah. I did find the first half of the movie to be pretty interesting. Like it, that's it's an interesting contrast. It's uh, compelling. It, right? It's compelling. Like I, the first half of the movie, I I was compelled by. But then the second, so basically, well, essentially, what we happens? And yeah, so to this the, big, big spoiler, their, their big escape. Yeah. So what happens is, is the she essentially so the first time. The kid gets. She little... tries to send the kid with him to go get help by making it seem like he's got a really bad fever, and it doesn't work. Old Nick just brings in some real shitty medicine, and he's like, you know, deal with it. Mm-hmm. But the next time she convinces him, she has to like coach him to like play dead and shit. Yep. And she rolls him up in a carpet. Well, old, uh, old Nick rolls him up in the carpet because he's going to go bury him somewhere to get rid of the evidence. Well, he was already rolled up in the carpet when old Nick showed oh, up. Oh, yeah, And yeah. she was like, he's dead. He died because you didn't fucking yep. take him to the hospital. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll take care of him. And he takes the kid outside of the shed into the back of his truck, and he's going to go bury him somewhere. But that's when, you know, he rolls out of the carpet because he, he was trained to by his mother. And jumps out of the fucking truck, bro, and like finds a random person, and and that's. And at first, old Nick is trying to take him back with him. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. But then, it's, then he gives up as soon he as he gives up. Which that that's another part I have conjecture with. I was like, if he was so like, Adam. I mean, he hasn't. Nobody's figured it this out. Well, it was it was gathering so much attention, bro. Right. And he just had to dip out. 
But at the same time, though, it's just like you know, that's a big piece of evidence left behind. He's like, no, you know, it would have been it, like there's so many easy ways you could have it. I was like, no, my, you know, my kid is just he's a problem child. He's like, got autism, and I have to fight him every step <laughs> of the way. Yeah. And you know, he jumped out of the car, and he's like, don't worry about it. You know, I'm I'm gonna take him to the doctor. You know, doctor appointment. It's gonna be fine. There's like so many ways you could have fucking smoothed that over, mm-hmm. like. To to you know make it. It got pretty dicey. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing though. Is be it's because, I that's the other thing that was unconvinced. I was like, how the fuck did this guy keep like you know what I mean? How the fuck did he get away with this for so long? And he's like this lazy. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I guess that kind of makes sense. I just you know. It's just conjecture on my part. It's just shit I thought about as I watched it. I was like, how the fuck did nah, he get away with this for so long? I get that. But at the same time, though, it was compelling because it, it was interesting to see the world through the little boy's eyes who had never seen the outside world. It's, it's exactly. Just, essentially, that's, it's, a, it's a fucking culture shock for him. That's like, the whole second half of the fo- the movie is them fucking adapting to the outside world and shit. Well, and... After being... Her being gone and, so long and him being born into... Right, and it's hard for him because he, he even says in some instances... Um, that, oh, you know, he misses the room because yeah. he's safe. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and that's, and that's all he knows. Well, and that's the people that, you know, that have suffered trauma that don't realize it. Like that's, they want to go to their safe Place. space. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I kind of, you know, I get why this movie won awards because it does something that a lot of movies like it where, you know, the victim is kidnapped and they go through this super traumatic event. I mean, seven years is a really fucking long Fuck, time. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about it is, they don't. You don't really see the aftermath of like the toll that takes on everybody. So I was like, I get it. I understand why this movie won so many awards. But man, that second half was like it was a grind for me to watch. Really? Like, yeah, I, I much prefer, like I I found the first ha- half, it, just how for, about, how about William H Macy. Dude, that was <laughs> that was I, heartbreaking. Yeah, we were, he. She's like, look at your grandson. And he's just like, I can't. And then he walks out. Yeah, like, he's like, that's, like Oof. he basically disowns his grandson because he's like a rape baby and shit. Yeah, which I mean, it's like you know, that's a. It's this movie definitely delves into some like very harsh, harsh territory. Yeah, and, and it's like you know, like weird and family it's really, dynamics. Well, and and it's like there's no really good way to like go about this but at the same time it's like you know it's not this little kid's fault like he he you know he didn't he came into this world that's all he did and like you, he, and you know brie brie larson her, her character she like fucking she doesn't even recognize old nick as being his father she's like he's no one else but mine jack is no one else's kid but mine you know what i mean he like he wasn't she basically like well, that's that's also a trauma response too, because she doesn't want to well, think about the yeah. fact that you know her fucking captor and raper fucking impregnated her, which right. is like it's just like man, it's, some, it's a lot of really heavy shit. And I was like, <laughs> you know me, I, like I know you, lo- you like this shit, and I'm just like, God, why did you do this to me again? <laughs> You know fucking William H. Macy's coming to town for, to do a fucking screening of Fargo and a Q&A afterwards? What? That's some wild shit. It's a little expensive, though. I don't think I'm going to go. Yeah. But I would love to do that. Fargo's a great movie. It is, man. I've heard the show is really good, too. Yeah. Oh, the show is good. I haven't watched it all. I've seen the first couple of seasons. I was going to... I was gonna say, um, it's pretty obvious uh, that her mom got remarried. I, I kind of like. He's like the best person in the movie. Like her, her, her mom's new husband. He's like very like calm and tries to like you know let everybody settle in. Oh, and he yeah, tries yeah, to be like guy. a I was a good Im- for yeah a no no. But he tries to be like I'm sorry. I just jumped right back in the movie. <laughs> no. I like I kind of like vibe with it. He's yeah, like, he you know, was good. He was a good guy. He's like that. He kind of reminds me of my sister's. Um, Grandpa Richard, like he's just a fucking really good dude. You I know feel like I mean? he was kind of the one that connected most with Jack. Yeah, and he I, and vice versa. I think Jack probably connected with him the most. He's the first person. Yeah, when he, they're talking about, are you hungry? You want cereal and shit? And they 
Yeah, you know? he's the first person that Jack's connected with outside the room besides and his the mom. dog, bro. He yep. had a dog. Ah, oh, it's his first time ever seeing a dog. Yeah, fucking and realizing a, bro. that dogs are like a real thing. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I had a dog, but he wasn't real. He was imaginary. <laughs> and then uh, more spoilers. Uh, it gets really dark, and uh, you know. Bree can't handle the trauma, so she. Uh, well, that's does... her real name. I forget her name in the. I in don't the movie. care what her real name. Yeah, is. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, she uh, does the gulp, gulp on the old pills, and she uh, goes into like cardiac uh, yeah, arrest yeah. and like seizures and shit. <laughs> she has and to they go gotta, back to the hospital. Yeah, I mean, she's got to stay in uh, the psych ward until like she levels out. Who's she? She's like Supergirl or something, right? Brie Larson. She's a uh, Captain Marvel or whatever. Oh, you whatever. Know? <laughs> you know what? You know all that all that fucking girl power pandering shit that Disney does now. You know what I mean? Or like the gender or the gender or the race pandering, where it's like they're constantly swapping in like characters from other movies and like those movies aren't doing well are they i don't no, think they it's, are it's because like there's a new one right like a newer one yeah there was a little mermaid it's like i don't give a fuck that you made the little mermaid black i, I meant the uh, marvel one brie larson oh yeah the marvels yeah it did really bad because it was a mediocre movie because again it's just like man i don't give a fuck they keep pumping out shit dude you can't... yeah well and it's like they're, I, I they're going quality or quantity, quantity over quality. Quality. well it's yeah. also because they like um they just pander to gender and race and all that shit. Like it's like my point about all the little, woke shit. All the woke shit. And I was like, that's my thing with the Little Mermaid movie. I don't care that she's black. I don't give just a fuck. Just make it make it an interesting movie. But that's all the thing. them it's live like, action Disney movies suck. Yeah, they do. <laughs> is they there do a good one? Don't, I don't, don't know. Probably not. The only one that's like okay is the um the I Jungle haven't Book. watched them all. Oh. The, the Jungle Book one is actually pretty okay, and it's and I actually I don't like. Think I cared for that one. I it had Christopher Walken. I remember he was King Louis. Um, and then uh, Bill Murray was blue. <laughs> but I actually like the ending Look of for the bare necessities. Yeah. And bare necessities. I like the ending of the live action Jungle Book better than the cartoon version, specifically because it sticks more to the book and there isn't some like li- weird little love thing where like Mowgli sees a girl for the first time and then he just fucks off to the human <laughs> village you know what I mean yeah that's true uh, where I feel like the conclusion to the live action one is a little more natural now it's like it's not a good it's not a great movie but it's an okay movie like I en- I enjoyed watching it. it wasn't it wasn't bad it was essentially a re it was just like the same movie as the but some of these other ones, they're just like the acting's not good. The fucking CGI is like okay. Will Smith is genie. Uh, dude, that was a, <laughs> that was a fucking travesty. I don't, I, didn't, I don't. I haven't watched most of them, but I've, I've tried. I'm not to. interested in. Well, yeah, well, it's like them. I tried to, and they're just bad. They're How just about like, the Lion King? Was that any good? I didn't, I didn't watch, watch that one. Watch Honestly, uh, my cousin's wife, her favorite movie is The Lion King, and she's like the, that. Dude. And she is like a Disney freak. You know, what I mean? she's one of those people. They go to fucking Disney for vacations every year, and even she was like, "The Lion King live action movie sucked." The original, like, the original Lion King was my first movie ever seen in a theater. Oh, cool, man! I think the one that I remember was um, Aladdin. Aladdin I, is the one oh, I remember. Interesting. They were both Disney movies. Yep. Yep. Robin Williams and shit. Hell yeah. All right, back to the room. Um, that scene where the fucking reporter comes in to ask her fucking questions and shit, that was shitty, right? Oh, that... It, and but, she asked her... She, like, grills her, like, with some shitty questions and shit. But that that's a, that's a straight-up media, though. Like, those, fe- those people are fucking oh, monsters, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all for the views. It's like they don't give... They don't give two parasites. shits. They very much are parasites. Like, they're... Dude, media... people. Media personalities are fucking scum. Like, she asked her, "Did you ever think about killing yourself? And did you think about asking your captor to take him to a hospital or something?" <laughs> what? Yeah. Or she's like, "Did you ever?" Th- what? She's like, "Also, like, did you ever just think about giving Jack up and you know letting him, letting your captor take him to have a better life, like?" giving him to like an adoption center it's like that's... that would never happen yeah you would trust old nick to fucking take that kid to right like a fucking 
firehouse or something you know that's well what they she's do literally with asking these questions to make her emotional like it, it's just it's such a shitty thing like and it's like but that's like that was hard like, scene. i think that was like the last part of that movie i found to be really captivating because it was like i was like oh this is some real shit like this is shit that fucking media personnel definitely do i know it's, it's like, like they got like, no heart no compassion oh they don't man it's, for the fucking person it, 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 it's literally it's about money and it's about it's about making them views basically it's about you know? Money, views, and using someone's suffering to make them like more popular or famous. It's fucked up. Totally. And it, but it's like it was like, yeah, that's very realistic. There's a lot of fucking there's a lot of people that do that and it's atrocious. Winding down to the end, um, they go back to the room after all, you know, after everything. Dude got arrested. We didn't say that yet. But, um, I mean, we all knew that was going to happen. Like, Right. But Jack wanted to go back to the room just to see it. And they go back and they see. And Jack realizes that there's no way. that That's no way to live. You know what I mean? And he, he says goodbye to everything. Because everything in that room was his friend. You know, because he didn't have friends. He didn't have no one except his mom. So he's saying goodbye to the wardrobe, the plant, and all that. <laughs> And I feel like that's that's uh that's his closure, you know what I mean? Which it's his it's his closure, but it's it's so interesting because it's uh, it's, it's like the kind of nice. It's 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 also sad though because it's like, it's, it's terribly it's, sad. It's because it's like the end of his childhood, you know what I mean? It's like him. It's like him coping with reality, and so like his time in the room was him being a little kid, and that time is over now. <laughs> And other scenes do show him playing with other kids in the neighborhood, too, which is nice. Um, I thought Brie Larson was incredible in this movie. Uh, and the kid, Jacob Tremblay, he's really fucking good. Pretty much all the performances were great. Yeah, the kids' performances were great. The story's very good. It was well shot. Cinematography is really good. I'll be honest, I'm a bit of a, bit of a Brie Larson hater. I really don't mo- like her in most movies. <laughs> I will, I will, I will concede that she was at least tol- tolerable for me in this movie. I was like, okay, you know, you, your your fucking acting isn't as wooden as a fucking oak tree in this movie. I. I I, I can watch this. <laughs> what else have you seen her in? Is it just Marvel shit? Other or? Uh, Marvel shit and some other shit she's been in, man. Um, she I remember she was in um, the Scott Pilgrim movie back in the day, and she's fucking, never saw it. It's a. It's I don't a, think it's, it's for me. It's fucking mediocre, but she's even People more. People love it. I she's think. more mediocre. I I don't like it because I read the original like comic book, and the, of course I was you like, did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> And honestly, for one, Scott Pilgrim is way more of a piece of shit in the comic book. Than like Michael Sarah. But he's also like a way more like energizing and funny character. Like Michael Sarah is just Michael Sarah in that movie. He's yeah, not he's fucking, fucking Scott. Super bad. <laughs> yeah, he's not Scott Pilgrim. He's just like, oh, you know, I'm the weird little tall boy. Like, you know, he's like, he I can, plays the same thing. He's the he's same pretty. fucking character. But and, you know, some I gotta say, I love Arrested Development. Oh, I do too. <laughs> I do too. And, and that fucking his character in that movie works. Like that works, you know. This is character, even though it's basically the same fucking character and in super Spot, bad. In Scott works. Pilgrim or No, Arrested? Super Bad. Like Super oh, Bad yeah. and Arrested Development. Like he play yeah. basically plays the same fucking character. He's but, basically, uh, I but, mean a lot of people do that. Like Danny McBride. He's the fucking same yep. everywhere too. Except for in a handful of things where it's like more serious shit. But but um, he, I would say he's a little bit different in Righteous Gemstones, but I will say like he's got the same he's attitude. got the same attitude and cadence. But it's um, but like it, if we're talking like Eastbound and Down, and then like all the movies he did with like Seth Rogen, he's the he's basically the same. Yeah. But I like him in Eastbound and Down because it's like that all, those characters, but like dialed up to eleven. Like <laughs> yeah. he is so funny in Eastbound. Pineapple and, Express. Yo. Like him, yeah. But, uh, this is the end. But I was going to say, um, for Scott Pilgrim, though, um, he was a fucking terrible cash choice because uh, Scott Pilgrim is supposed to have a shit ton of charisma, and he's funny, and he's kind of like 
a really like energetic guy and it's just like it's it was just weird you know it was a weird cast choice he's just like he just doesn't fit the character at all so i kind of actually don't like that movie that much but brie larson's in it and she's completely forgettable <laughs> like she's i've seen a lot movie? of yeah she's in that movie and there's a bunch of shit i've seen her in she's where i'm not just the like main girl is she? nah she's a little side character but i was just like you kind of are a side character brie larson i hate you <laughs> i'm just gonna say it She'll never listen to this podcast, so I can <laughs> talk all the shit I want on her. Uh, She's I'm, one of the. the hey man, one of those... I'm trying to break into the fucking showbiz. Fuck show business. No, I'm kidding. Um, I right. just I just feel like she's one of those people that fucking pander to trends and shit, and I, I don't respect her. I don't respect her at all. <laughs> and I know she doesn't care about my opinion because I'm a white guy, so she can go fuck herself. <laughs> You're a straight white male. Straight white male, so my opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> Which is, I mean, it's fine. And, you know, I, society pretty much tells me that anyway, so society. fuck it. But society can go fuck itself, too. You're a crazy breed. Hope you're not lonely. Sorry, my, my rant's over, Without everybody. me. Have you seen the movie in the wi- Into the Wild? I've heard Who's of it. That, uh, Who's in it? Emile Hirsch Emile and Hirsch. fucking Kristen Stewart. I don't know. I, I, I sang that song, and that's from that movie. That, it's, it's a great movie. It fucking it sounds But I digress. We, we, do, we, we digressed a lot this episode, honestly. <laughs> I know, we're... We we went on these little threads, yeah, but it was fun that's though. That's fun. Where do you rank this movie? I'm uh, at about a seven point five, maybe leaning towards eight. You know, I, I I fucking I think it's very hot. It's very compelling I, and very fucking. I found a lot of heartbreak in it. And I don't know. Go ahead. I found the movie to be more interesting in the first half. That being said, I definitely figured out what was going on very early on. And then once it like got pat like once that like half point marked and we're just kinda just dealing with the trauma and the aftermath. Yeah. I kinda really just started to lose interest. I, I'm kinda sitting at where you were sitting at. I'm probably at like a five, maybe like a five point five. Like it's just like these kinda and honestly we're it's kinda just, swapped. Yeah, but it's like you know, it's kind of like the different strokes for different folks because like these kind of movies, they're like they're just really not my movies. They're not I know. Like, I I <laughs> I thought about that too, and uh, before we took so much time off, we took weeks off of the podcast. I was thinking that I did, I have been picking a lot of bummer movies, so I was going to pick a comedy, but this time we're picking Christmas movies. Christmas bro. movies. Should we jump right into that? We'll yeah. finish out this episode. Well, yeah, let's finish it out, man. You want to go first, or should I? I am going to pick a movie that's got Joseph Levitt Gordon. Oh. I know it Seth is. Rogen, yeah, and um, what's Anthony Mackie? I am picking the night before. I seen it once. I barely remember it. <laughs> ah, good pick, man. I I was I did look up Christmas movies earlier just because, but I already had the one I was going to choose in mind, and it's a classic. Okay, it's one of those ones everybody knows. Everybody knows your name. Um. You know, Home Alone. Let's go. I love that. I love Home Alone. Fuck, I'm excited, it's man. It's been a little bit since I've seen it, you know, and fucking, it's always been, it's always been a solid Dude, flick. Dude, that, and, that yeah. fucking, I, I remember seeing Home Alone in the theater when I was a kid. I, that, that fucking, do 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 like, it, it's going to get stuck in my head, man. It's like, it's, that, that opening, like, music is so iconic. And frankly, frankly, I think it's one of the best John Hughes movies, dude, too, man. Just, fucking joe pesci you got fucking daniel stern macaulay culkin who just got his star on the hollywood walk of fame yeah Catherine o'hare Catherine uh, it's got o'hare john candy john candy bro oh and it's got fuller go easy on the pepsi <laughs> he's uh, uh save it for, save it for the pod next week man because we're gonna be quoting the fuck out that's of that movie. macaulay culkin's brother yeah yep yep uh, it Kier- sure is. is that kieran yeah kieran i think that's culkin. kieran yeah all right, so we got the night before we got Home Alone on next week or next time's Christmas episode, which will come out on Christmas Day. That's gonna be wild! Hell yeah, <laughs> look forward to it, bitches. Yeah, Christmas is on a Monday this year. All right, thanks, thanks for listening. Yeah, y'all. peace out, you sexy kids. Like, <laughs> Merry Christmas. 
and Cam Mistletoe. And all that happy holiday <laughs> shit. And we love you. Thanks for tuning in. else was an x-men caitlin jenner <laughs> sorry all right <laughs> <laughs>